This is a piecewise graph. Look at the top graph. Where is this top graph discontinuous? At zero. But is that graph used at x equals zero? No. At zero, where it is discontinuous, it gets picked up by this new equation. Now, this new equation has two variables. We need to find the a value right here so that it is continuous. So there's some a value which would make these two graphs continuous. Here's how you do it. Basically, the first step is you're going to find 4 sine x over x, except I'm going to plug in 0, because I want to find out where does this graph hit at 0. Is that OK? What's sine 0? What's the height on our unit circle at 0? Zero. Oh wait, we have problems here, don't we? We can't plug in zero. But do we know the limit? Ooh, we can't do this. But we can't. That doesn't work. But if, can we get the limit as x approaches zero of four sine x over x? Can we do that? Yeah. Kind of tricky, huh? What's that equal? Four. Isn't this one yeah. times four? So isn't that four? Ooh, that's a tricky one. You wouldn't think about taking the limit to actually find that value because you couldn't actually plug in zero. So basically, do you understand this graph is approaching four as it approaches for x equals zero, it approaches four. So would you understand that this graph, this bottom one, a minus two x, shouldn't that equal the four here? Now, shouldn't it equal the 4 when x is 0? Can I find a? What's 2 times 0? Zero. So when a equals 4, these two graphs will hit. Meaning, if I replace this with 4 minus 2x, plug in 0, what do you get? Do you get 4? And if this is 4, shouldn't this be 4? Don't they meet? Thus, isn't continuous? If you have these two graphs and they have the same output, won't they meet at that point? Now, there is an easier way of doing this, by the way. I could have just done this. Couldn't I? Don't I want to know when they two meet? And can I just plug zero in for all those? But it actually doesn't work for this problem. Because what happens when I plug zero in for all of them? What happens here? Does that work? This one, I actually can't do it. Okay? In this situation, I can't. Most of the time, could you? Most of the time, you could just set them equal, and you're good to go. You just got to plug in 0 for x, and you can solve for a. But you don't always put 0. It's just that's the situation here. But in this situation, you actually had to go to this limit idea to start it off. So you had to do a little extra step and then go from there. So just, just things you'll get used to with homework. And the last one. So basically, a was 4. Intermediate value theorem. We want to see if it applies. So here's what this one is saying. This is a closed interval from 0 to 3. It wants to know, are there any c values that will get an output of 0? What is it saying? OK, first of all, we need to plug in 0 and 3. You'll see why in a second. So when I plug in 0 to f of x, it gives me 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 8, which is? f of 0 equals 8. And we need to do f of 3, the other side of the interval. This is closed from 0 to 3. 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 8. 
So we have f of 3 equals 9 minus 18 plus 8. So negative 9. Is it negative 1? So what this looks like, let's make a little sketch. At 0, we're at 8. Are you okay? At 0, we're at 8. Consider that 8 up. At 0, we're at 8. At 3, we're at negative 1. You guys okay with that? Very quick sketch. At 0, we're at 8. At 3, we're at negative 1. f of c equals 0. Isn't this f of c, isn't that equal 0? y equals 0? There's your dotted line. There's your two dots. Does intermediate value theorem apply? Meaning, is this line continuous? Is this equation a continuous? It's a polynomial. So first, it is continuous. You first got to state it's continuous. So if it's continuous, to get from here to here, do I have to cross that dotted line right there at least once? Okay. So I have to, to get from here to here, I'm going to have to cross that at least once. Could it be more than once? Now, thinking about the type of graph, it's a parabola. Do you think it's going to hit more than once? Yes. I'm assuming this parabola is going to look like this. So it's probably not going to hit more than once. It's probably going to hit somewhere in here. Okay, But we can guarantee, using intermediate value theorem, that it will hit at least once. It so it could hit twice. But we can, the whole point of this is, does it apply? Meaning, is it continuous? And is this dotted line between the two dots? If this dotted line right here was down here, would it apply? No, because I can't prove it's going to hit down here because it's not between the two dots. Shouldn't my dotted line be between the two dots? So it applies. Yes, IVT applies. But, yeah, so it applies. Now, let's just find the answers where it applies. How do we find out this point right here where it crosses? Well, isn't that output of 0? Can I just go, oh, 0 equals x squared minus 6x plus 8? Could you find those values? Because you're wanting to know when the output is 0. And this one's factorable, I think. Isn't it negative 4, negative 2? So we have x equals 2 and 4. Which of those two is in my interval? So is that where it actually crosses? There's another spot, but it's outside my interval. This is the actual place it crosses. Interme intermediate value theorem applies because it's continuous. And this line is between those two dots. You have to verify it's between those two dots. So that's the point where it is applying.